have the Trangia uh, and we're just going to have a quick look at how we're going to light this and use it safely for groups. So first of all we'll have a look inside the Trangia. Uh, lid or frying pan. This one comes with kettle and two pans. And then we've got the setup of the base. Inside the kettle we've got the handle and these stoves come with the gas burner. So to set up, first of all we need to think about where we're going to set up. We want a nice level spot. We don't want it to be in the way of anybody else, so we don't want it in the doorway to our tent. We don't want it anywhere where people are going to have to step over it or anything else. Um, that will do fine for us. This has got little notches out of it, so that will line up. But first of all, we need to put the burner in. We slot this handle through. And it can be a little bit fiddly to get this through here sometimes. Be pulled through and then the burner will slot in there and it does actually go in until it clicks so it's held nice and steady. Then we put the windshield on and that bit's good to go. Next we need a gas bottle. They come with the ceiling in and this screws into it. We need to just make sure we take it steady to make sure that we don't get it cross-threaded and it's always worthwhile just checking that that's off before we screw it up goes into the seal and then make sure that our stove is on level ground now a lot of people would now go into lighting the stove but we don't want to light the stove until we've got something ready to put on it. So in our case that's a pan and some water so that we're ready to cook say rice or pasta. If we we're going to make a cup of tea then it would make more sense to put the kettle on. So we're just about good to go. We need a final check round. Let's make sure that we've got a fire blanket somewhere in the cooking area. Just make sure that we're not in anybody's way. We're going to use barbecue lighter because that helps us keep our fingers and everything out of the way. And so turning that on till I can hear it and now we can hear the roar. I don't want to, that's pretty clear in this light that that's, but I don't want to put my hand or anything close to it. But by using a stick I can very clearly see that that's a light. And now I want to use the handle put that on and if I wish I can put the pan on the lid on either that way or if it's raining really hard I can put it on that way to take the pan off you sometimes have to tap it on that side just to move the lid across then it allows me to scoop the handle up one good thing is if the stove is alight to stick the handle up on top and that lets everybody know that the stove is a light. This all gets hot so I need to make sure that I'm using the handle and I'm not in anybody's way. To turn off, I'm just going to turn that to the minus sign and we're good to go remembering this is all hot. I need to leave this to cool down before I pack it away. Okay, so you've got your rice or whatever cooking. Sometimes people ask, how do they keep the rice or pasta warm whilst they're cooking the next course? So you would take your rice or pasta off and place it to one side. You already have your tin of meat or sauce or whatever open and in there and be able to place that on. Then you can put the lid on and then you can keep your rice warm by having that on top. And you can furthermore stop bits from getting into it by putting your plate on top of all that. Okay, the other thing we just wanted to look at is how we could use the kettle. 
or the uh, lid as a frying pan. So the stove is off at the minute, so it's safe to put this in without anything in. But the kettle sits in just like so. It's important to make sure the handle is up, otherwise it gets too hot and the black rubber gets burnt. To put the lid on as a frying pan, which to be honest doesn't work that well, so it's worth not worth relying on being able to fry. You use the handle carefully to flick the legs out, and if you've been cooking on those, those will be hot, and then the frying pan can sit on top. But as you can see, there's quite a gap for wind running through there, so if, if it is bad weather, it's not particularly brilliant. Okay, so this stove has been off for a little while now, so it is cold. So we're just gonna look at how we would uh, pack it away. So first of all, we can detach the gas. We've got that in the off position. That just unscrews. It's got a self seal in it, so that should be fine. We can dismantle the windshield. Again, sometimes the gas is a little bit fiddly to get through. So the base of the windshield is the biggest bit. The rest of the windshield goes inside. Pans, one slots inside the other, and then they sit inside. So that leaves us with the gas burner itself, which can go back in the bag. And the handle, handle goes in, gas burner pops in, lid on, the whole lot slots inside the pan, then the legs go down, lid on top, the buckle, going to work with that on top and somewhere, there we go, there's the little bits to put that through. Get the one on the other side. That clips up. Job done. Fab.